Histograms is our next section in our chapter two. And we talk specifically about histograms because they are the most frequently used graph in terms of a frequency distribution that we will deal with this year. It's important that not only do we need to know how to create histograms, but we need to know how to read them as well. A histogram is a vertical bar graph that displays the frequency of all of our classes in a frequency distribution table. A couple of things to keep in mind. To start, we need to create, obviously, a frequency table. And then we'll draw our graph. You have experience with this from integrated algebra. Just a couple of reminders for you, as some things are different. The, your bars have to touch. That doesn't change. However, when we do histograms in this class, we're going to use our class boundaries. We can use the class midpoints as well, or we can use the lower class limits. The problem with using the lower class limits is that occasionally we can run into some errors. So I would prefer, obviously, that we use the class boundaries or class midpoints. And unlike integrated algebra, we do not have to have breaks in our graph um, wherever we start. Uh, we are just going to start right from where we are. Um, it is not necessary to put breaks in the graph at all. Let's take a look at an example here. This is a, an example of a frequency histogram. We have basketball point scores at the left. We want to construct a frequency table and the histogram. First of all, in going through, I can notice that I have 20 scores. And I'll create my frequency table. And you can see the frequencies there on the right. You can also create a tally chart if you'd like. I chose not to for this one. My frequencies uh, going down the interval column are 2, 1, 7, 6, and 4. And my classes, I decided to have a class width of 3 in this case. The um, data is very tight knit, as you can see. When I create the histogram at the bottom, and I apologize for the poor writing, but when you're dealing with a mouse, it's tough. Um, I, you can see that I used the class boundaries. And we have the bars. I didn't need a break. And we have 2, 1, 7, 6, and 4 as the height of the bars. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that obviously what we want to look for here is the fact that it's not really a normal distribution because of the fact that the second class, 26 to 28, goes down from the first class, 23 to 25. Your homework in this section is textbook pages 57 to 59, numbers 1 through 8 all, and 10 to 20 even.